You can learn a lot about a person's musical goals and values based on what they keep around their piano. All of the music and trinkets and implements that people keep around their instrument space feeds into their psychology and their mindset when they sit down to their pianos. And I find it so interesting to see how each person's piano layout is different. Today I thought it could be fun to take you on a bit of a tour of my own piano layout. Um, maybe you'll get a bit of insight into my own psychology. Um, but more importantly, my hope is that you could use this as a point of comparison and reflection with your own piano layout. Maybe by seeing what I keep around my instrument and why, it could help you reflect on what your setup is and how it's the same or different and if there are any changes that you would like to make to your instrument setup that might help propel you a little bit more towards your own true piano goals. So if that sounds good to you, then let's take a look. So I thought before we got into the details of my piano setup, I would just kind of provide you a bird's eye view of the whole thing. Um, this is my electric piano. Um, and as you can see, I don't really have a lot going on here, right? <laughs> Actually, looking at this view, it looks kind of Spartan. There's not too much going on here. Um, I swear my room is cozier than it looks right now. <laughs> Um, but this is just focusing on the actual piano itself and the things I keep on the piano. So um, as you can see, there's not a lot going on here. I don't have too much um, by way of my piano layout, but the things that I do have here are really meaningful and very purposeful. So um, let's take a look at each of these components together. This is typically what my piano looks like after a day full of teaching, okay? So pretty much this is what my setup is all the way through the week, okay? Um, let's take a closer look. So the first thing that I always, always keep at my piano is some music that absolutely sparks joy. Some piece of music that is totally connected to my bliss. I keep this front and center. Now in my case, it's almost always Chopin. I have his nocturnes here. I also have his waltzes here. Um, whatever is really inspiring me at the moment. I always keep that visible on my music stand so that every time I look at my piano, it is sparking joy, okay? I find that by keeping a select piece of music here, it invites me to just find five or 10 extra minutes here and there to play because it's all ready for me. If this wasn't here, or if it was like, full of clutter or whatever, I probably wouldn't take those extra moments because the piano wouldn't be as inviting to me that way. But with one or two pieces of music here that I energetically connect to, I find I capture those moments a lot more. Some of you might be wondering how often I switch up my music. Um, basically, every time I look at my piano, I'm evaluating how I feel about the piece that's sitting there, right? So because my piano is in my office and I do a lot of work here, um, I am looking at my piano a lot. Um, but basically, any time I pass my piano, I'm kind of evaluating how do I feel about the piece that's sitting here, right? Um, and whenever my feelings about the music I want here changes, I just change the, the music. Like, for example, I'm totally still feeling the nocturnes, so I'm gonna keep these here, but I'm actually feeling the waltzes a little bit less. And so I'm just gonna move this off to my bookshelf. And I'm only gonna keep what is absolutely sparking joy right now. Another thing that you might have noticed in the past um, is this little notebook that I keep here. This is a composition book. So let me just with one hand show you. Um, it has staff paper on the inside. And so when I'm sitting at my piano and I'm playing around with experimenting and stuff like that, if I find notes or a sound that I really like, I just jot it down in here. It's like a little musical journal for me. Later on, if I, you know, go back through it and I like what I was working with, maybe I'll try to expand it into something longer. 
Um, but this is just basically a really quick way for me to jot down ideas um, without needing to like plug in my keyboard into my computer and recording the whole thing. I just use um, notation. This is the reason why I'm such a fan of teaching people how to write their own musical notation. Because when you can just like quickly jot your ideas down here and keep them, you just get these little snapshots, these little windows of insight into what you were creating and thinking at the time. Um, so this book lives here. And oh, if you're interested, um, this particular, oh goodness gracious, uh, this particular brand is Moleskine. Um, and I like it. It's um, got nice, you know, kind of ivory, creamy pages. It's nice. Um, but I think after I'm done this book, I'm going to, I'm going to get the loose term brand. Uh, let me see. I've got a, hold on here. This is my notebook, but this is a different brand. This brand is from Germany. And what I like, loose term, this is how you pronounce or how you spell it. Um, but what I like about, this is my other kind of notebook for planning and stuff like that. But what I like about this is that the pages are numbered. And so that will make this a lot easier in terms of referencing and, um, you know, keeping track of my ideas and, and, and stuff like that. So um, Moleskine, Moleskine is great, is a great book. Um, but after the Moleskine, I'm going to go to the Loose Term brand. And of course, you can't write anything in your notation book without a musically themed pencil. So I always keep a pencil at my piano. Um, this is really helpful for, um, let's say like writing and counting if you wanted to, um, or even what I do a lot of with, with my own music even, is sometimes I just connect the notes that are supposed to be played together. And something like this, it can be a little bit more straightforward, but like, oh my God, when you're getting into some of this stuff, like <laughs> here's an example of a piece where I would definitely like connect. Well, when I get about here is about where I'm gonna play the left hand. You know what I mean? So I still do this all the time. I encourage my students to do that. But at any rate, a piano themed pencil. I always keep a pencil at my uh, music stand. And um, I think it's just really fun to have a musically themed pencil. It's kind of special, right? Um, I bought a bunch of these online and uh, sometimes I even share them with my students as well. Um, most of you know I teach online, but um, I sometimes mail out little holiday packages <laughs> for the winter holiday and I will include a piano pencil because I think it's, it's just special, right? Like it's, it's kind of magical and to to have a, a music themed pencil for musical purposes i just think that's a lot of fun the other thing that i sometimes include at my piano is a visual timer okay so um when i'm playing piano it is very easy for me to lose track of time okay i could be playing for hours and hours before i notice any time has passed at all um, and that it can be very fun obviously to be able to lose track of time like that some people call it like being in the zone or um, getting into the flow um, and it can be fun to get into flow but um, but it can also be really stressful for me because I don't know that I'm losing time when it happens. And if I have other things that I want to do that day, um, it can it can prevent me actually from sitting down at my piano because I'm afraid that I might lose time like that, right? So um, I wanted to start using a timer and I did start using the timer that was on my phone, um, but I actually didn't like that very much because I didn't really like being startled by the alarm. And I also found that I was like always like tapping it to see how much time was left. And that was also disrupting my playing. So <laughs> I learned about a visual timer. Um, a visual timer works really similarly to a kitchen timer, but instead of just having an arrow, it actually has like, <laughs> this one's meant for kids. So there's like a space theme to it, but it has this like visual component to it. So now this is, it's set to 30 minutes here. So now this is going to be a 30 minute timer. It's going to slowly go back this way. And basically what I do is I just like put it off to the side and I let it sit there. It's totally silent. I don't know if you can, 
I don't know, barely hear anything, but um, it doesn't tick. Um, it's silent and just like over the next 30 minutes, it's going to slowly um, go back in there. Um, and it makes just a gentle, you know, a gentle ping when it's done. It's not like a, a very abrasive alarm. So um, I really like that. It's quiet, I keep it off to the side, and then I can just kind of like see it at a glance. I don't need to tap it for the information about how much time is left. I can just get this visual feeling of it, and I think that's perfect. So last but not least are some of the more technical aspects of playing piano. Um, these are my headphones. I always play with headphones rather than speakers because I find it to be a more immersive experience. Um, and I just enjoy that, right? And I also like the privacy that it provides. I can experiment and I don't have to worry about um, bothering anyone or about sounding good for anyone. I'm just plugged in and my piano playing is just for me. So I really like that. Um, I'm really happy with these headphones. Now these are older. I don't think you can find this exact kind anymore. I got these in like 2010, so they're almost 15 years old. Um, but um, the brand is one that I like. Um, and these, okay, these specifically are called monitor headphones. These are not regular headphones. They're called monitor headphones. Um, monitor headphones are mainly used in recording studios um, when you need to listen really closely to um, the sound that's coming through, like when you're mixing audio and stuff. And so headphones like these prioritize having an accurate sound rather than an enjoyable sound, if that makes sense. Other portable headphones that you might use just for like listening to music and stuff, they tend to have their own um, like internal mixing components. So they'll like pump up the bass or something like that, right? Um, I prefer the flatter sound of these monitor headphones um, because that's, I don't need to pump up the bass for like, you know, Chopin. <laughs> Um, I enjoy getting a more accurate understanding of what my playing sounds like, and that's why I like having monitors for that. Um, what else? Oh, over here. So you might notice that I have a cord over here on the side. Um, this is my MIDI cord. So um, from time to time when I'm playing piano, I like to um, record music into my computer. And rather than needing to set up all the cores and stuff to my computer to, um, to make that possible, I leave this plugged into my uh, keyboard on one side, and then this is the end that will go into my computer. So if I need to grab my MIDI cord, then I just have it right here. It does add a little bit of, um, you know, visual clutter to my piano space, but honestly, like, Leaving it here and knowing that recording is an option very quickly when I want it, I will take that rather than putting this away and then needing to like dig it up, you know, when I'm inspired or, you know, in the moment or whatever, right? Um, and just seeing it tucked back here kind of reminds me that I've got this fun creative option if I want it and that creativity feels really good. And you might be wondering why I keep passing over this, um, this area. So. Um, this is the music that I'm using with my own students. So anything that I'm working on with my students that I've printed out, I will keep over here on this side. So this side tends to be for work. This side tends to be for play. So yeah, I think that's it. My piano tour. Now I said earlier that you can tell a lot about a person's musical goals and values based on what they leave out at their pianos. And I'm kind of curious to know if you feel that you know me any better after having gone through my piano layout. If so, I would love if you could comment and tell me any insight that you feel you gained into my personality or my goals as a musician based on what my piano layout looks like. If I had to guess what my piano layout says about me, I would guess that it shows that I'm a person who values creativity um, and someone who is always trying to keep the spark of magic alive at their piano. Um, but I'm curious to hear what you think. And I'd also really love to hear about your piano setup. What kinds of things do you keep around your piano? And what do you think that says about your values and goals as a musician? Feel free to leave a comment below 
And I also hear that YouTube is starting to roll out video comments. So I don't know if that's available on my channel or not, but if you happen to see that option and you'd like to share um, a little snapshot of what your piano setup looks like, I think we'd all be really interested to know. At any rate, I can't wait to hear about your piano setups. Take care.